الله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Indeed, all praise is due to Allah, and as such we should praise Him. We should seek His help and seek refuge in Him from the evil which is within ourselves and the evil which results from our deeds. For whomsoever Allah has guided, none can misguide, and whomsoever Allah has allowed to go astray, none can guide. And I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah. And that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last messenger of Allah. Inna asdaq al-hadith kitabullah wa khair hadi hadi Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Indeed, the most truthful form of speech is the book of Allah and the best source of guidance that brought by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa sharra al-umuri muhdathatuha وكل كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار. And the worst of all affairs are the innovations in religion. For every innovation is a source of misguidance, and all misguidance leads ultimately to the hellfire. Brothers and sisters. The Ummah today is faced with a trial. Not a new trial, but an ongoing trial. Our brothers, our sisters, our mothers, our daughters, our sons, our family, is suffering in Palestine. We've all read about it in the newspapers. Qunut has been said in the masjids. Many prayers have been made. Inshallah, we've all made our own individual prayers for them in the middle of the night. And those prayers should also be for the millions who die and who continue to die in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Chechnya, and in all the hot spots of the Muslim world. And we as Muslims feel helpless. What can we do? Some have chosen the route of demonstrations. Some have chosen the route of donations. Ultimately, what we are seeking is the help of Allah. Because, as human beings, we are not capable. We are not able. The Muslim world today is splintered, shattered. Its bits and its pieces don't act as one. And the solution to the problem of Palestine is not one which can be solved by the Arab nations. We often hear Palestine being referred to as an Arab cause, Arab and Islamic. It is not an Arab cause. It is an Islamic. 
But this Arab thing which keeps coming forward is part of the disease which makes it impossible for us to solve. The disease of nationalism. This is one of the biggest diseases eating away at our body today. The body of the Ummah. Why we cannot come together one billion plus and solve the problem of Palestine. The challenge which is before us with our lack of resources, our country is exploited. The challenge before us is one of obtaining of, or of gaining the help of Allah. This is all that we can call on at this point in time. And all of the du'as that we hear being made in the masjids, they're all calling for Allah to destroy Israel. To punish them with what they have punished our brothers and sisters. To create an earthquake which would swallow them up. Or rain down upon them destruction like what nations before were faced. A miracle. A miracle is what we are praying for. A miracle. It happened in the time of Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so it can happen. It happened in times following the prophethood. Muslim armies at different points in history received the help of Allah at the most crucial moments. But we have to realize that the help of Allah comes to those who deserve it. When the Prophet ﷺ described the man on a journey, and one of the best times for prayers to be answered is when one is on a journey. Raising his hands to the sky, and among the best times for prayer to be answered is when one raises one's hands to the sky. Calling on Allah. And of course, who else can answer prayers but Allah? But, as the Prophet ﷺ said, his food and his drink was haram. The clothes that he wore were haram. His flesh was grown from haram. So how was Allah to help him? How was Allah to help him? We have to be realistic. Allah's help doesn't come to those who don't deserve it. He helped before. The case of Palestine is not new in history. The Crusaders took Palestine for 100 years. For 100 years. The Crusaders occupied Palestine. And during that occupation, no adhan was made 
from any masjid or from Masjid al-Aqsa itself. No adhan for 100 years. And that situation didn't change until Allah brought forth Salahuddin al-Ayyubi who changed the map, defeated the Crusaders and re-established the rule of Sharia over that holy land. It came when those who sought, sought it, deserved it. The whole Muslim world suffered in that period of time. But it had its own problems of fragmentation, which were not nearly as bad as ours today. Not nearly as bad as ours today. It was fragmented, but not like what we live today. And the Muslims of that time were more consistent in practicing the religion than the Muslims of our time. So, when is the help of Allah going to come? Mata Nasrullah. When are our prayers going to be answered? We have to tackle this issue with full sincerity if we are to expect any results from our prayers. And the foundation for that lies within the religion itself. It is not something external from us. It is something internal within the religion itself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said very clearly, in Tamsulullah yansukum. If we support the religion of Allah, if we establish the religion of Allah, then Allah's help will come. Victory will be ours. Even in military defeat, victory will be ours. That is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So brothers and sisters, I ask Allah to give us the courage to support his religion. To make Islam real for ourselves so that his help can come to us and to our brothers and sisters and our family in Gaza. Their help is dependent on our help. I ask Allah to put this sincerely in our hearts that we would make the kind of efforts necessary to obtain the help of Allah. ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. I say that asking Allah's forgiveness for myself and for yourselves, and call on you to turn to Allah and seek His forgiveness, for none can forgive sins besides Him. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. There is a hadith. which Prophet Muhammad وسلم, narrated from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu Huraira narrated that he heard Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, إِنَّ اللَّهَ قَالَ مَنْ عَدَانِي لِي وَلِيًّا فَقَدْ آذَنْتُهُ بِالْحَرْبِ Indeed, Allah Almighty has said, whoever shows animosity to a friend of mine, 
I declare war upon. Indeed, Allah Almighty said, Whoever shows animosity to a friend of mine, I declare war upon. Allah's declaration of war is confirmation of destruction. For none can fight Allah. That war is a one-sided war. Allah destroys them. Whoever shows animosity to a friend of mine. The term used in that hadith, hadith Qudsi, is wali. The wali. This has been translated loosely as saint. But we can find in Surah Yunus, Verses 62 and 63 where Allah says there, Ala inna awliya Allahi la khawfun alayhim wa lahum yahzanun. Alladheena amanu wa kanu yattaqoon. Indeed, the friends of Allah are those who are not overcome by fear or sadness. Those who believe and fear Allah. Those who believe and fear Allah. Iman and taqwa are the conditions which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set for one to be his friend, one who he takes as a friend. So one who has these qualities, Allah will take care of his enemies. So he has no need to be afraid. And he has no need to be saddened, to be overcome by sadness. Of course, there will always be some elements of fear and sadness in all of our lives. But we will not be overcome by it. Fear and sadness. The kind of fear and sadness which leads to suicide. A few days ago, in the newspaper, there was an article about a billionaire. A billionaire. This guy had nine billion dollars. And because of the financial crisis, many of his companies ran into problems. And he was so saddened by it so afraid of financial ruin that he killed himself. A billionaire. Killed himself. This is a subtle reminder for us. A subtle reminder that if we don't develop Iman and Taqwa that is where we're headed. Whether it is direct physical destruction of ourselves through suicide or spiritual, emotional, psychological destruction of ourselves, destruction of ourselves. We self-destruct. Because hearts don't find rest except to the remembrance of Allah. Allah bi dhikri lahi taqma inna al-qulub. It is only with the remembrance of Allah. That is the basis of iman and taqwa that hearts become content in this life. And Allah went on to say, وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِنْ مَفْتَرَدْتُهُ عَلَيْهِ my servant does not draw nearer to me with anything more beloved to me than the religious duties that I imposed on him. How does one become a wali? 
a friend of Allah. Allah outlines it in this well-known hadith. We begin with the farm. What Allah has imposed upon us. What he has made obligatory on us. This is where we begin. And this relates back to what I spoke in the first part of the khutbah. To gain the help of Allah, as we will see at the end of this statement. We begin with what Allah has made obligatory on us. The first of the obligations is salah. Salah. For men, it is salah in the masjid. Salah in the masjid. And we have to ask ourselves. We have to ask ourselves. Are we fulfilling that obligation? Can we get past stage one, Salah in the Masjid? How many people prayed Salatul Fajr in the Masjid this morning? Put your hands up, please. How many people prayed Salatul Fajr this morning in the Masjid? Twenty-five or twenty-eight people. Twenty-eight people. Out of how many people in this masjid? This is an obligation. This is the most primary obligation. And today was Juma. Now we have excuses during the rest of the week. We have to go to work early and all these other kinds of things. We need extra sleep and all this. But today was Juma. And for those of us that pray in the masjid, Salat al Fajr, reality is that the lines in Fajr on F Friday is no different from the lines in Fajr on Thursday or Wednesday. And the Prophet ﷺ had said that one of the distinguishing characteristics of the hypocrites is their inability to consistently pray Salatul Fajr in the masjid. So what we're talking about right now is an ummah in which hypocrisy runs in the veins like blood. If only 25 out of 800 or 1,000 people sitting here made fajr in the masjid, then that is what it is saying. Yet we seek the help of Allah. Have we supported his religion? Can we say, in Tansurullah is applicable to us, if we support the religion of Allah? Can we say that? Can we say that we have supported the religion of Allah in this, the most basic obligation on us about which Prophet Muhammad the last words that he said before he left this world was as salah as salah he continued to pray himself carried to the masjid
And what are we doing? And we wonder about the Gaza or Iraq or Afghanistan. But this is what Allah SWT made clear for us. That if we are to become his friends, friends for whom he declares war on their enemies, he destroys their enemies, then we have to start here. Going into the street and demonstrating when we don't pray Fajr in the masjid is a joke. It is a delusion. It is a deception. We are only fooling ourselves. Allah's help is not due to us if we don't do what is most basic. وَلَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلْ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهِ And the way by which we come closer to him, as Allah said, my servant continues to draw nearer to me with voluntary works until I love him. The voluntary acts of prayer, of fasting, Sadaqah, Umrah, various voluntary deeds which are not prescribed on us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but recommended by His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The more that we do those, the closer we become to Allah. And we continue to do it until Allah loves us. And of course, those whom Allah loves, those are His friends. And Allah goes on to say, فَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُهُ كُنْتُ سَمْعَهُ الَّذِي يَسْمَعُ بِهِ And when I love him, I become his hearing with which he hears. وَبَصَرُهُ الَّذِي يُبْسِرُ بِهِ وَيَدُهُ الَّتِي يَبْتِشُ بِهَا And his sight with which he sees and his hand with which he strikes. وَرِجْلَهُ الَّتِي يَمْشِي بِهَا And his foot with which he walks. The hearing, the sight, the actions of the limbs, hands and feet. Come in line with what Allah is pleased with. So we see and we hear what is pleasing to Allah. We take, we give, we restrain, we support what is pleasing to Allah. We go. We travel, we step out of our homes, we only go in a way and to places which are pleasing to Allah. That is the consequence, that our life becomes truly dedicated to Allah. And when that happens, when the Ummah dedicates itself to Allah, then Allah goes on to say, وَلَئِنْ سَأَلَنِي لَأَعْطِيَنَّهِ وَلَئِنْ إِسْتَعَادَنِي لَأُعِيذَنَّهِ And were he to ask me, I would surely give him. And were he to seek refuge in me, I would surely grant him. Were he to ask me, to ask me anything, I would surely give it to him. And were he to seek refuge in me, 
I would provide that refuge for him. This is what is the goal of Islam. That we would live lives dedicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he would support us in our times of need. Like these times. Were it not for some among our brothers and sisters in Gaza, were it not that there were among them some friends of Allah, then their case would have been finished a long time ago. From the very beginning. When Israel with all of its might unleashed its fury on Gaza, they would have surrendered and ran. What is it that held them firm all these days now? Those among them, those among them, who are true friends of Allah. This is what we are faced with, brothers and sisters. Striving to become true friends of Allah. So that we can support them as they deserve to be supported. And that we can establish Islam in our lives, in our countries, as it deserves to be established. I ask Allah to support, to strengthen, to give success to his friends in Gaza who are giving their lives for his religion. And I ask Allah to put in our hearts their commitment to do the same where we are here. I ask Allah to make this religion a way, a true way of life for us. One which we devote ourselves to in every waking moment of our lives. I ask Allah to support our brothers and sisters in Gaza and in Iraq and in Afghanistan and elsewhere in the Muslim world to give them success, to strengthen their efforts, to protect their women and children, and to give paradise to those that have died for his sake. And I ask Allah that we be blessed with the last words, La ilaha illallah, before we leave this world. Amen.